You are welcome to my YouTube channel at GMAX41. In this video lesson, we are going to take a look at one aspect of practical chemistry, which is salt analysis. Now, when dealing with chemistry particles, generally we give attention to volumetric analysis, also known as titration, and then we talk about qualitative analysis, which we refer to as salt analysis. So in this video, we will be taking a look at the salt analysis. If you are here to subscribe to my YouTube channel, please kindly do so. Subscribe, turn on the notification bell so that once I upload any content, you know, as you may need, you will be personally notified. In dealing with salt analysis, our interest is to determine, to identify the cations and anions present in a given sample of a salt. So you are given a chemical salt and then you are required to identify the ions present in that salt. You know, usually at the end of the experiment, you might even be asked to write the IUPAC name of the salt, the salt sample used in the experiment. So the basis of this video lesson, which I consider as part one, of salt analysis would be to help you to know the reagents that you use in identifying a particular ion present in a salt sample. If you get used to the reagents used to identify a particular ion, then that is really a plus. As a matter of fact, to an extent, you can constructively predict the ion that is present in that salt. You know, even without carrying out a full experiment on the salt. But anyway, I, I'm, I'm saying this just for you to be aware, not for you to uh, decide that, okay, for that reason you're not going to run the experiment. Whenever you have the opportunity to carry out real-time experiment, please do so. But when you are choked with time, actually you can use the knowledge of the fact that each ion has a particular reagent that identifies it, okay? You can use that knowledge to constructively predict the ion that is present in that salt sample. So to start with first, I would like us to know the various ions that students can be tested on when they are dealing with their qualitative analysis experimental work. First, let us look at the positive ions. All right, the cations. A student can be tested on calcium ion, zinc ion, lead ion, aluminium ion, copper two ion, iron two ion, and iron three ions. Then we also have a positive radical, ammonium ion. That's NH four. This eight NH four plus. This eight cations. Uh, cations that a student should give attention to while preparing for salt analysis, you know, test. Of course, your exam question will be based on one or more of these positive ions, which I've mentioned. Next, we are going to talk about the negative ions that a student can be tested on. In this case, we have chloride ion. That is Cl minus. We have triosocarbonate 4 ion, CO3 2 minus. We have uh, trioxo sulfate 4 ion, SO3 2 minus. We have tetraoxo sulfate 6 ion, SO4 2 minus. And of course, we also have trioxo nitrate 5 ion, NO3 minus. Generally, these five are the major negative ions that have been tested for in salt analysis. These guys, you know, these negative ions are actually acidic radicals. So a student will be expected to prepare himself or herself for these ions. One or more of these negative ions, instructions will be given to you on time to confirm their presence in a particular salt sample. So having mentioned this, we have all together, you know, 8 plus 5, giving us 13 ions that you are expected to get yourself used to. Now, added to these ions are gases. In experimental work, if a gas is liberated in the process, your examiner will expect you to identify the gas 
that is being given out in the process of the salt analysis. So the question could not be, what are the gases that a student may expect, may prepare himself for, while preparing to take a salt analysis exam? The following gases are of interest. One is carbon dioxide, CO2. And carbon dioxide is obtained from the acidic radical CO3 2 minus, that is trioxycarbonate 4 a ion. Trioxycarbonate 4 a ion usually produces carbon dioxide during salt analysis. Then another gas is SO2, that is sulfur oxide. Sulfur oxide usually is liberated from SO3 2 minus, that is trioxysulfate 4 a ion. Then again, we have this uh, gas, ammonia gas. Ammonia gas is usually liberated when testing for ammonium ion, NH4+. That guy, that, that radical usually produces ammonia gas. Okay? So these three gases, very important. And then, uh, that reminds me also, NO2, nitrogen four oxide gas. Nitrogen four oxide gas is liberated from trioxonitrate 5 ion, NO3 minus. And so altogether we have four gases. If you add up these four gases to the 13 ions that we have, we have a total of uh, 17. You know, 17 things that you need to be thinking of. You need to be well prepared for when you are uh, uh, getting ready to take a salt analysis examination. Like I stated in this video lesson, our interest is to get to know the reagent that we use to confirm that. Once you know the reagent, the truth remains that you have actually gotten a high you know, level of knowledge about these tests. The interesting thing is when dealing with reagents used to carry out salt analysis tests in order to confirm a particular ion that is present, that reagent that is mentioned is usually unique to a particular ion. And let me just leave you with one secret. Even though sometimes we, you can be tested in a negative direction, the truth remains that most times, if you are asked to add a particular reagent to a given portion of the salt sample, that reagent you are asked to add is because the examiner that gave you that instruction knows that the ion that that reagent will precipitate is there in that salt sample. I hope you get that right. An examiner will tell you to add a particular reagent to a portion of salt sample, most likely because the examiner knows that the ion that that reagent will precipitate will bring out, that ion is there. Okay? And so for that reason, when you know about the reagent used for confirming a particular ion, it's a plus that could help you to constructively predict the ion that is present in the salt. Having said this, I would like us to move on straight to the reagents that we use to confirm the ions of interest. First, chloride ion. Which reagent do we use to confirm that chloride ion is present in the salt sample given to you? The reagent used for testing for chloride ion is silver trioxonitrate 5, silver trioxonitrate 5 solution, and aqueous ammonia. That aqueous ammonia, we can call it ammonium hydroxide also sometimes, okay? So you use silver trioxonitrate 5, AgNO3, and then aqueous ammonia. So what's the idea? If you give me a salt sample and you're telling me, add silver trioxonitrate 5 solution to it, followed by ammonia, aqueous ammonia, automatically I know that you want me to test for the presence of chloride ion. That is the trick. So if the instruction stops at that, you know, telling me add silver nitrate followed by aqueous ammonia, definitely I know that what is there is chloride ion Cl minus. So take note of this: the reagent used to confirm, uh, confirm chloride ion is silver nitrate and aqueous ammonia. Let us now talk about the second negative ion, that is trioxocarbonate for ion Co3 to minus. 
What do we use to carry out the pachymetric test for this aion? We use dilute hydrochloric acid. Dilute hydrochloric acid. That's just what we use. So if you as a student, you are exposed to a particular salt sample, and the instruction there simply tells you add dilute hydrochloric acid, just that, to a particular portion of a salt. Add dilute hydrochloric acid, no other reagent, nothing, nothing else. Then you should know that the ion present there is CO32 minus. That is the anion present there. Because it is CO32 minus as a negative ion that we use dilute hydrochloric acid to test for its presence. At this point, I'd like to say this. Remember, I told you when testing for CO32 minus, carbon four oxide is usually liberated from this uh, ion. And so it is important in this process of adding dilute hydrochloric acid to the salt sample, and then you should be expecting that a gas will be liberated, carbon four oxide. And to verify the presence of that carbon four oxide, you would need dark litmus paper, blue and red together, blue and red together. So if the carbon oxide is coming out, you know, whatever reaction it has on any one of them will help you to identify that this is a gas, whether it is acidic or alkaline. Like carbon oxide is acidic, so generally it will turn down blue litmus paper to red in the process. Again, there is something that carbon oxide will do to lime water. Carbon oxide will turn lime water milky. You can take a look at this setup. This is what we do. Once the carbon oxide is coming out, you will channel that carbon oxide to a test tube that contains lime water. You can take a look at the setup in the screen. Now, once the carbon oxide is channeled into the lime water, what is going to happen? As you bubble the carbon oxide to the lime water, that lime water will change to milk color. It will become milky. And once you see this, you know that yes, carbon oxide is the gas we have there. So in summary, what have we learned here? We use dilute hydrochloric acid to test for triose carbonate for a young. And during the process, carbon oxide is given off. Let us move on to the next negative ion. We'll talk about the trioxo sulfate 4 ion and the tetraoxo sulfate 6 ion. Now, I'm combining these two because the two of them mix use of the same reagent. Trioxo sulfate 4 ion, SO32 minus, tetraoxo sulfate 6 ion, SO42 minus, both of them make use of the reagent barium chloride and hydrochloric acid, dilute hydrochloric acid. Now, you want to differentiate between this reagent here and that which is used to test for CO32 minus, which I just talked about. For CO32 minus, you are using only dilute hydrochloric acid. But if you are testing for SO32 minus and SO42 minus, that is the trioxo sulfate and the tetraoxo sulfate, you make use of barium chloride, in fact, that is one of the major reagents, as well as dilute hydrochloric acid. So what does this mean? You are carrying out a salt analysis experiment and the reagent you are asked to add to a portion of the salt sample is barium chloride and then hydrochloric acid dilute form of it. Once you hear that barium chloride, you should know likely that you are testing for either SO32 minus trioxo sulfate or SO42 minus tetraoxo sulfate. Now, how do we differentiate between these two? If you carry out this reaction by adding barium chloride, you would observe white precipitates. Then when you now add hydrochloric acid, if the white precipitate dissolves in that hydrochloric acid, then you know that the sulfate group there is trioxo sulfate for ion SO3, 2 minus. However, on adding the dilute hydrochloric acid after barium chloride, are you following? If it happens that the white precipitate formed when you added barium chloride, if the white precipitate does not dissolve on adding dilute hydrochloric acid, then you know that the sulfate present there is 
tetraoxysulfate 6 aon SO4 2 minus. So that is how we differentiate between the two. So what is the point? Once in the experimental procedure, you are told add barium chloride, and then of course followed by nucleic acid. Then no, please, that the ion you are testing for likely is SO3 2 minus and SO4 2 minus. Because that is the confirmatory reagent that you use for these two guys. The white precipitate of SO3 2 minus will dissolve on adding hydrochloric acid in excess, while the white precipitate of tetrosulfate SO4 2 minus will not dissolve if you add dilute hydrochloric acid in excess. Let us now conclude the negative ions, all right, by talking about NO3 minus trioxonitrate 5 ions. What is the reagent used for testing for this guy? So that once you hear add this reagent to this portion of this uh, salt sample, you would know that you are testing for trioxonitrate 5 ion. The NO3 minus makes use of the reagent of the trioxosulfate 6 and ion 2 tetraoxysulfate 6. What usually happens there as an observation is that you would see a brown ring form in the test tube. A brown ring will be formed in the word test tube. And so with this, we have concluded the reagent we use for confirming for the presence of negative ions. What have we learned so far? The idea of your knowing the reagents is to guide you in your laboratory work. Once you hear or you read from your instruction, of course, from which the question paper will be given to you, once you read from the instruction, add this reagent, you know that you are likely testing for so-so substance or so-so ion. Add this reagent, you know you are testing for the other ion. So in summary, to test for chloride ion, you use silver nitrate, silver trioxide 5, and aqueous ammonia, also known as ammonium hydroxide. In place of uh, the silver trioxide 5, you may be presented with lead 2 trioxide 5 solution. It can also be used in place of silver trioxide 5. Then to test for carbonates, trioxide carbonates, we make use of dilute hydrochloric acid only. To test for SO3 2 minus and SO4 2 minus, we make use of barium chloride and hydrochloric acid dilute form. In place of barium chloride, you may use barium trioxide 5. If barium chloride is not available, you will be provided with barium trioxide 5. And again, in place of hydrochloric acid, you might use trioxide 5 acid dilute form of it. And then we concluded by talking about the reagent used for testing for NO3 minus. Make use of tetrosulfate 6 acid and ion 2 tetraoxosulfate 6. I hope you enjoyed this video lesson. Please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Share this video so that other scholars and friends can get to watch this video and, of course, benefit from it and prepare for whenever they are taking an exam of basic practical chemistry salt analysis. In my next video lesson, we are going to deal with the confirmatory reagents for identifying and of course confirming cations, that is, things like calcium ion, ions like zinc ion, lead 2 ion, and aluminium ion, and of course, copper 2 ion, ion 2 ion, and ion 3 ion. So we'll also talk about the confirmatory reagent for ammonium ion. Remember to personalize your subscription. After subscribing, click the notification bell. Personalize it so that once I upload that of cations, you will be personally notified. And of course, when we are done with that aspect, we shall proceed to see how we present our report for whatever experiment that we carried out on this salt. I will see you in the next video lesson.